This subtle little number is a Ford Ranger Raptor and in this Car Gurus UK review we're going to take a closer look at why it exists and how it performs. But before we do that, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you catch all our latest videos. You can think of the Raptor as a souped up version of Ford's best-selling Ranger pickup truck. It kind of plays a similar role as RS does for the Focus. It's also the UK's only real performance pickup truck. It comes at the same time as the Ranger gets a bit of a refresh as well. You get a posher interior and a 2-litre diesel engine replaces both the 2.2-litre diesel and 3.2-litre diesel all of which we'll explore in a moment, but first it's important to recognise what is perhaps the Ranger Raptor's biggest weakness. That is, both the payload and towing capacity are significantly worse than a standard Ranger. For example, what you can carry in the back, the payload is only 620 kilograms, which is around half what a standard Ranger will carry, and it will only tow 2,500 kilograms as opposed to 3,500 kilograms of a standard Ranger. One nice touch though is that this is about the right height for a nappy change and it's very light to close. Now those weight limits do limit how useful the Raptor is going to be as a workhorse and because of those weight limits it doesn't qualify as a commercial vehicle which makes it quite expensive especially given that it's almost £40,000. This then should really be regarded as a recreational vehicle rather than one that will be used for work. It is essentially here for enthusiasts. This partly explains why the visual makeover is so extreme, because beneath this bodywork and underbody cladding, this car has been extensively re-engineered. It truly is a case of where form and function meet. The Raptor's width is a good example of this because it essentially grew to accommodate the engineer's desire for a much wider track. To make this work visually, the designers then had to fit drastically swollen arches and wheel arch extensions. It's also higher off the ground than a standard Ranger, so that step up to the cabin really is useful. As indeed is the fact that every Raptor in the UK comes as this double cab layout, and it's quite spacious as well, so in theory you could use it as a family car, hence why the tailgate is the perfect height for a nappy change, and we've got these Isofix bases here for child seats. That said, it's such a big vehicle and those seats are so high off the ground it's not very practical for things like supermarket car parks but then you could say the same thing about luxury sports cars or high-end SUVs you don't really buy cars like this because they're easy to park you buy them because of the way they make you feel So how does the Raptor make me feel when I climb in? Well, there's certainly a few special touches in here. In particular, these titanium paddles for the 10-speed automatic gearbox. There's just the right amount of resistance and precise click, very satisfying to use. And they blend in well with an interior that is also complete with some sports seats and a steering wheel with your top center marking and some buttons to control your driving modes. As mentioned earlier, Ford has adopted a two-litre engine for the new Ranger and in Raptor configuration, it's a twin turbo, which sounds promising, but with a 0-62 time of 10.5 seconds, it's got to be one of the slowest performance cars out there. And if you really want to pick up any pace, you're going to have to really work your way through those 10 gears. We say worry not about the fact it's only got four cylinders and 210 brake horsepower though and concentrate instead on what the Raptor feels like to drive. Because when you forget about the leisurely acceleration, what you're left with is a well-sorted, fantastically fun driving experience, both on and off-road. So even if you never plan to take your Raptor off the beaten track, you've still got a very rewarding driving experience. That, of course, is where the extensive makeover pays dividends, and in particularly, the strengthening of the chassis and the fitment of sophisticated race-bred Fox suspension to make it into a proper off-road performance car. 
As well as having lots more travel, the suspension on the rear has a completely different design to the standard Ranger and that makes a massive difference to the handling. It really is a revelation to drive, it feels really responsive and keyed to the road and because of that suspension travel it's also very comfortable. The six driving modes also allow you to set the car up as you wish, whether it's for sporty road driving or, well, sporty off-road driving. You can also select between two and four wheel drive. Opt for one of the racier settings. We'll go for sport mode. And you get an enhanced engine tone, as well as those bigger brakes, just really add to the experience. In fact, there's a sense of occasion no matter how mundane the drive is, and that's what we love about the Raptor. There's a train of thought that could quite easily say the Raptor is a waste of time. It's too big for UK roads, it can't be bought as a commercial vehicle, and the lack of big petrol engine up front is hard to ignore. What speaks volumes about this car is that it's still so desirable despite its shortcomings. So if you fancy a change from your usual performance car offerings, something that's a little bit different to look at and drive, then this really is the real deal. Could you see yourself behind the wheel of the Ford Ranger Raptor? Let us know in the comments below and please do subscribe and turn on those notifications. And remember, when it comes to choosing your next car, you can easily find great deals from top rated dealers at cargurus.co.uk.